Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, there are several things going on, several things that are of import, and because these things are of import, we're bringing it to y'all's attention. The first thing we're going to bring to your attention is there was a young lady. I've been working with this young lady for since 2012, and she is part of the Defraud Homeowners of America. However, she's also a part of another group. But I was specifically helping her with her mortgage on the side. And while helping her with her mortgage, they're still in their home, but they've gone through a lot to remain in their home. Sorry, I am steaming my food. And I have a uh, lid that is made out of metal to keep the steam inside. And it's one of those metals that don't have all of the chemicals in it. You know, that poison people. Well, anyway, I use my wok plus the lid, and I'm able to steam my food. We got a lot to talk about. There's a lot of stuff going on around here that I won't talk about because it ain't necessary. All right, let's get to the facts and the nitties and the gritties, if y'all don't mind. The young lady called me and told me that she took her tax credits to her tax agent. And her tax agent simply told her, I've never seen anything like this. What the f is this? And so she left me the message and I basically left a message for her because I called her back and she wasn't unavailable. And I basically told her that her tax agent, it's none of his business whether he's seen it or not before. That's not a prerequisite for filing taxes. Uh, your tax agent must have seen the documents in a previous filing before he can file taxes. What the flying fart? So I told her that we never promised anyone that we were going to explain to y'all how to do this. Okay? This is how we do it. We never said we were going to do that. This is what we told you. You'll have to do your own research. We, we did tell you that, right? So I left a voicemail for her. I said, just go into Google and type in how to type, I mean, how to transfer tax credits. How to properly document the transfer of tax credits. I want y'all to pay attention. Do the same thing. Sorry. Transferring tax credits to a spouse or civil partner. Civil Guide to Completing the 2021 Pay and File Tax Return. Hold on. How do I transfer my tax credits to a new employer? How do I move my tax credits on revenue? Can tax credits be transferred? Many states offer credits that can be transferred or sold to other taxpayers. So it's not illegal. It's not illegal. Oh, these credits can be used to, by the purchasing taxpayer, the transferee, to offset its current or future tax liabilities, future tax liabilities when you're doing the carry over and carry forwards. The transferee does not typically need to engage in the type of qualifying activities that generated the credits, such as prove to me where these came from. I apologize. Many of you guys are not understanding this. So go back and listen to that Discord. And you will find that you've done nothing wrong. You just have to document it on your Schedule C. Just have to document it on your Schedule C. You don't need to show any paperwork to anybody. You don't need to show any paperwork to anybody. Whew. The credits are federal. Are they transferable? Tax credits are issued by the federal government as well as the United States state and territory governments. And thus can be applied against tax liabilities at either level. That's right, you can use your federal state, federal tax credits and your state tax credits 
to apply them to the federal taxes and the state taxes, but not the same taxes for the same tax. You know what I'm saying? Can't use the federal taxes and apply it to the state and use the exact same federal taxes and apply it to federal. You can't do that. No, no, that's double dipping. You can't double dip. Okay, you never change horses midstream, all right? All right, didn't make no sense. Didn't make no sense when they said it the first time to me either. Tax credits are either transferable, meaning they can be sold by the entity earning them and purchased by another or non-transferable. So we transferred credits to people, gave them documentation for their records. Okay. Ooh, I'm so glad we got this out. Look, look right here. What does it mean to sell tax credits? Let's find that out. If the value of the company's credits is higher than its tax liability, they can sell the excess credits to another taxpayer who owes the state taxes. Uh-oh. My bad. How can tax credits be used? Well, let's find out. Tax credits can reduce the amount of income you owe to the federal state governments. Credits are generally designed to encourage and reward certain types of behavior, such as forgiving. Okay are considered beneficial to the economy, the environment, or further any other purpose of government deems important. Ladies and gentlemen, by debt forgiveness. Okay, watch this, let's do this real quick. Cause I gotta finish eating. I'm, I'm doing some fish, steamed fish, uh, breaded fish, steamed breaded fish. All right. The benefits of a creditor's debt forgiveness. So you need a creditor to forgive your debt. That's me eating. Nope. Give me a second. And I also did some further research. And when I finished my fish, I decided to put the information in a little bit better because it's very hard to find this, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to go to the IRS tax topic 431. Remember, we've gone to 453, but we're going to go to cancel debt. Mama, they canceled my debt. What, do I, what does that mean? So let's find out. We're not going to read this whole thing. Okay, we're going to go to the section that I talked about so that you guys can understand what's going on. It's not that long, but it's long enough for me to not want to be bored. Do y'all want to be bored? Mama, I want to be bored. He should explain. <sighs> no, son, he doesn't have to explain. He's tired. You see, he's got other things going on. No, he brought it up. He should be explaining it. You see, that's what I have to go through. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's make sure you guys understand something. Ca uh, control C on the keyboard if you're using a Windows based computer, and then Control V to paste it in. We're going to be right there in just a second, okay? That's where we're headed, okay? Just so y'all know. If you borrow money, pay attention, and are legally, that means statutorily, obligated to repay, not constitutionally obligated, but statutorily, legally obligated to repay a fixed or determinable amount at a future date, you have a debt. Mama, I got a debt. You got a who? I got a debt. Well, you make sure you treat her nice, okay? And you be home by 11. All right. You got money? Okay. See y'all later. You may be personally liable for a debt or may own a property that is subject to a debt, a lien. 
if your debt is forgiven, are discharged for less than the full amount you owe, the debt is considered canceled. If your debt is forgiven or discharged for less than the amount that you owe, it's considered a canceled debt in the amount that you don't have to pay. The law provides several exceptions, statutes, however, in which the amount you don't have to pay isn't canceled debt. What? How can you cancel a debt and then it's not a canceled debt? That don't make no sense. These exceptions will be discussed later. I don't want to discuss no exceptions. Cancellation of debt may occur if the creditor can't collect or gives up on collecting the amount you are obligated to pay. If you own property subject to a debt, cancellation of the debt also may occur because of a foreclosure or repossession or voluntary transfer of property to the lender, abandonment of the property, or a mortgage modification. In general, man, I done met that fool. I couldn't stand him when he was out of generals, but he was in generals, and then he talked to dollars and had dollar generals, and man, it was just a bunch of generals and commanders and chiefs. Sorry. In general, if you have canceled debt income, if you have cancellation of debt income, wait, hold on. Cancellation of debt income, how can that be income? That don't make no sense. I canceled that debt. Why that debt gone? It's gone. How can that be income? How can that be a benefit? Because they saying you got the loan and you didn't have to pay it back, so that's income. But I paid the taxes on the loan in the first place. This is a personal loan. This is a private loan. Ain't no income tax on a private loan. This is a private business. I wasn't doing it for business. I was doing it for personal use. It's called a consumer loan. Consumer loans are for personal use. They are not taxable. They're not for profit or for gain. I didn't profit off of this. They gave me the money. Okay, that was a gift. That be Oh, I'm what what? Oh, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry that I went all the way there because people don't understand what's going on. So y'all need to know how to explain it. So go back over what you just heard me say because I'm not going to repeat it. You have to understand how to explain it because that's the way they wrote the stupid law. Okay, because your debt is canceled, forgiven, or discharged for less than the amount you must pay, the amount of the canceled debt is taxable and you must report the canceled debt on your tax return for the year the cancellation occurs. Ladies and gentlemen, if it's a gift and you get a gift tax, uh-oh, the canceled debt isn't taxable, however, if the law specifically allows you to exclude it from gross income. These specific exclusions will be discussed later. Ladies and gentlemen, please understand that when you forgive a debt or somebody else forgives a debt, that they are saying it is taxable, that it is income. You will have to go over. Remember, your loan was for money. It wasn't for a home. You were borrowing the money to pay a private home owner for their property. Go back and look at the way things happen. You paid a private home owner. Amounts canceled as gifts. See, what did I tell you? So, hey, I had never read this before. It's my first time going over this junk. But like I said, when the bank canceled the debt on a consumer loan, that was a gift. That was a personal loan. That wasn't for profit or for gain. That is under exemptions. UCC, Article 9, Section 109, also Section 102. Household goods, consumer goods, not for profit or for gain. It was a consumer loan, a consumer transaction. Look up, research consumer transactions. You'll be able to take care of a lot of things on a consumer transaction. Hold on. Certain qualified student loans canceled under the loan provisions that the loans would be canceled if you work for a certain period of time in certain professions for a broad class of employers. Certain other education loans, repayment or loan forgiveness programs to help provide health services in certain areas. Amount of canceled debt that would be deductible if 
as a cash based tax payer as a cash based tax payer as a cash mean not an accrual based tax payer as a cash based tax payer pay it okay a qualified purchase price reduction given to a seller of property to the buyer pay attention to this ladies and gentlemen a qualifying purchase price ladies and gentlemen every year companies give you a discount that's what AmeriLegion does. It gives you a $2,500 discount. Why? Because that's a net operating loss. They get to, it's a qualified reduction. It's a purchase price reduction. Just that simple. Any amount discharged from certain federal or private educational student loans amounts meet the requirement of any of the following exclusions aren't included in income even though their cancellation is debt income exclusions from gross income ladies and gentlemen even the banks when they cancel your mortgage to them it's not a gross income oh by the way cancellation of qualified real property business indebtedness that's for the banks they're excluded. They don't have to pay gross income tax when they foreclosing your property. There is a, uh, let's see if I still have it pulled up. I had it pulled up earlier and that's what I get. Let's see. No, and I don't want to, I got something pulled up on my screen so I can't go back to it. Oh, wait, I do have it. Hold on a second. Hold on. Because ah, it's coming. Hold on, cause I was coming. If you ever lean on me, I'm sorry. Uh, the law that the banks don't have to pay their indebtedness. It's called the short title is an act that may be entitled Mortgage Forgiveness Debt Relief Act of 2007. Ladies and gentlemen, Mortgage Forgiveness Debt Relief Act of 2007. Go and read it and see if they weren't prepared for the so-called global meltdown. No, 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 no. Go and read it and see if they weren't prepared for the global meltdown. See if they didn't give the banks relief before the so-called global meltdown. If you don't think this is all scripted, I apologize. I apologize because, you know, it's probably just sovereign talk. You know, because that's all them sovereign people talk about is the government doing this or doing that mm -mm -mm. i'm telling you something ain't right keith sweat said it so i say it all right let's continue sorry i had to turn off a particular appliance all right let me make sure you guys understand when you receive your tax credits you're not supposed to be showing the paperwork to nobody. It's none of their business. Okay? Look, do I have cancellation of debt income on my personal residence? Household goods, consumer goods, not for profit or for gain. I've told all of you, you need to correct the record. They're listing your property as real estate. Real estate is commercial property. Okay? Stop letting them list it as real estate. How do I report debt forgiveness on my residence due to foreclosure, repossession, abandonment, or because the loan was modified or there was a short sale? How do I do it? Huh? 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 Anybody? Anybody? Well, they say we need to fill out a 1099-C. Say what? This interview isn't designed to address cancellation of debt that applies to joint liability what is due to canceled bankruptcies or other blah, 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 blah. Please refer to that junk. This tool is designed for taxpayers who were U.S. citizens or resident aliens. I'm, I don't know about no aliens, y'all. You know, because them things, they be coming out of the sky and they just be probing and probing and probing. And they don't, they don't know anything other than the probe. I've never heard of an alien doing anything else other than probing somebody or scanning somebody. That's all, let's see, they either scamming you. Are they probing you? Lord have mercy. Ladies and gentlemen, you notice how they don't answer the question? 
but pay attention. How do I report the debt forgiveness on my residence due to foreclosure, repossession, abandonment, or because a loan modification or a short sale? They tell you you have to do a 1099-C. Ladies and gentlemen, how do I report? They tell you you have to do a 1099-C. Received from your mortgage lender. Well, look at that. Information you'll need. Okay, but take a look. Let's begin. I don't want to begin. Estimated completion time. I don't want to complete it in the estimated time. Interactive. Tax assistant. How do I report it? The following set of questions will determine blah, blah, blah. If you include income as debt that was canceled by your principal, let's go. Let's go. What you waiting on? Hold on. Your request could not be completed. Oh, yes, I'm using a VPN. The IRS don't like VPNs. Ooh-wee. IRS don't like VPNs. They can't stand VPNs, y'all. All right. I was speaking with a young man. We talked to all of you about um, the fact that all of you are bankers. P-R-I-V-A-T-E. E-I-N. So we're going to put in here private bankers E-I-N. Not going to tell you how to do it. Just tell you that it's there. Oh, come on. Dude. Lord, have mercy. Hold on. Let's do it this way. TikTok, 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 tick. Search Google. Search Google. Google. Individual private banker estate trust EIN. YouTube. I don't know nothing about that. Okay, but I can tell you. Read it. Look at it. Go over it. It was February 22nd this year. EIN for individual bankers. We the people. That's right. We the people. Okay, I'm going to download the PDF just to have it. Let's go over it. This is the individuals filling this out. This is, hey, Patrick Devine. So this means this was done some time ago. Okay. Patrick Devine, the trustor. This is what people are doing. And notice what they're saying. An unincorporated. You can do an unincorporated non-membered bank. And what I would do if I were you guys, because some of y'all are not going to understand. You're doing it for banking purposes, and what you're going to put, you see how they put to process private assets? Okay, you see how they put that, ladies and gentlemen? What I want you all to put there is the act that says that you're a bank. Duh. The act that says that you engage in banking business. 12 USC. Oh, hold on. I got to space these words out. Um, what I want you to put, because y'all need to understand this, ladies and gentlemen, is y'all going to put the, ah, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Now I got to do it all over again. Hold on. Get rid of that. Sorry. Got to do it all over again because I didn't feel like writing. There are certain laws that allows you to operate Oh, I hit the wrong button. Okay, there are certain laws that allows you to operate as a bank. So to document your being a private banker, if I'm filling out that document, that's the SS4 form. These are the instructions. You can set up an EIN for the SS4 form. However, I want you all to understand something. Those of you who received a 98 series number, those of you who received a... Uh, what do you call it? Another EIN from SACOM. You receive the very same information. Very same information. Very same information. We didn't do unincorporated bank. Okay? Very same information. Banking institution. Okay, you're going to put 12 USC 221 membered bank. Okay, because it explains that it means any bank. Okay, you've already been set up at this. It says private bank of private properties. Okay, this is information that they're putting in. The rules don't say put this in. 
but you can do this. This has been working for peoples. Okay? This has been, but you don't want to use their terms. Now, he says individual banker, sports I sleep CEO. So, ladies and gentlemen, being a private banker, you are already a private banker. But I don't want you to put private banker. I want you to put banking institution. Because that's your law. And if you can put P-R-E-S, P-R-O-C, 2039. You could actually put Presidential Proclamation 2039. And you can put right here, banking institution. You can even put private banking institution. Because that's what the act says you are. I didn't say you were that. The act says you're that. Okay, give me a second. One second, one second. <laughs> I want to give all of you guys, some of you guys are out there and you're thinkers and you know how to do things. I got to turn off my voice recognition. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this right here, just so you all understand, this is called an administrative subpoena. Do yourself a favor. Go online and look up administrative subpoenas. I got to do something right now. That right there. See, what we got to do is we got to take this to two. Enter, then enter. See how that does? That was on that line. I don't need it on that line. Oh, by the way, somebody told me, they said, hey, you put a document up online, the numbers ain't lining up, then y'all need to get your editor and line it up yourselves. Okay, this is a courtesy. Mother, I'm sorry. We'll eventually put it up online, the corrected one. It's been corrected. Just too many things going on, ladies and gentlemen. I want y'all to pay attention to this. This is the sample of the federal subpoena. Hold on. Hold on. Because eyes coming. Hold on. Because eyes coming. If you ever lean on me. The quickest and easiest way to detain a tax ID for banking purposes using our online application. It only takes a few minutes to fill out the form. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the government website. You can do an online banker's application. EIN, Bankers Online, does an account with an EIN has to be classified as a business account. I am blah, 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 changing revocable trust, blah, blah, blah. Ladies and gentlemen, need y'all to understand, you are permitted and allowed under law to have your own private banking association. Now, this one is called government doc filing. Now, what they will do is they will fill it out folios. But the only problem is they're .com, so this is not the government. Okay? This is not the government. But let's go ahead and do this right now. Get an EIN. Let's see if we can do this, all right? Let's do this right now. Free EIN tax ID included in your LLC corp formation. So they want you to do a corporation. They want you to set up a corporation. But I thought we were looking for a banker's EIN. So again, many of you who received the 98 series number, we did it for banking purposes. So you are a private bank. You don't need to do this special thing. Well, the IRS issues a specific number for private banks. That's right, but that doesn't mean that you need to get that specific number to be a private bank. <sighs> okay. Um, bankers online. Does an account with an EIN? Don't care. Uh, Barclays. Don't care. Mm, no foreign financial institution. Standard delivery. Don't care. See, these are not government websites, so I wouldn't suggest you go there. Oh, that's I'm in Ireland? Man, I didn't know I was in Ireland. Man, I'm in Ireland, y'all. Hoo-wee. All right. 
Well, that's why I couldn't continue with that other thing because I am uh, VPNing it from now on. Oh, by the way, let me uh, let you guys know the name of the web. The hold on, because I'm trying to remember the name and I can't. Okay, I just remember it now. It's called Wind. W I N D scribe S C R I B E Wind scribe V P N. Actually, they worked for me. Okay. However, connecting your printer to the computer and using it with the VPN requires you to make uh, land. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Enable land connections. You have to do that or you will not be doing nothing. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, private banks are allowed because the government recognizes it. Download that. PDF file, the file you saw me referring to earlier, not this one, but this one, and just copy it and mail it in or fax it in. There is a way to fax it in. Okay? Really that simple. Ladies and gentlemen, you will have to give your social security number. Why? Because, you see right there? Because it's not a foreign EIN. So put your information, your correct information. See, executor, administrator, trustee. But you have to go over the instructions because you don't fill out every line. These, This section is for something else. I ain't going to tell you what that is. Ladies and gentlemen, you can also call them and get an EIN online just simply knowing the information that goes in each one of these boxes. When the IRS, when they're doing EINs online, they're going over this form. So the first question they'll ask you, what is the legal entity's name? And you'll give them that. Is there, what is the trade name? And they'll ask you that. Is this a foreign EIN? No. Okay, what's the mailing address? And you'll give them that. Then they'll say, what's the physical address? And you'll give them that. Then they'll ask you, what county is it in? You have to know the county. So be aware of the county. Then they're going to say, who is the person that's going to be in control? You give them your names. Okay? And then they're going to ask the, for the EIN or the social security number. And you're going to give them the social security number. Okay? And is this application for a limited liability corporation? They're going to ask that. And you're going to say, no. And then it is type of entity, and you going to say a private bank. It's okay for you to do that, but I say a private non-member banking institution. Just that simple, a private non-member banking institution. Look up the rules for banks and look for a non-membered bank and see that it means any bank. And then they're going to be asking you other questions uh, what's going to be the purpose? Why are you applying for this? Oh, this for uh, banking purposes. Okay, specify the purpose. And as I told you, if it's me, I'm going to put private banking institution. I would also say for the receipt of Federal Reserve notes. I mean, that's too much words. But that's, that's what I'm doing, just to make sure people know. That was me stretching. And then the closing calendar year, December works. Uh, for corporations, it's usually October, but December works, okay, December 31st. Do you expect that your employment uh, would be eligible for $1,000 a year? No. Okay. Do you expect your employment tax liability will be, oh, $1,000 less per calendar? Yeah, the answer is yes, yes, because I'm not for profit. I'll never make a profit. And it asks, check this box, describe the principal activity. And you're going to say private, non-member banking institution. And after that, 
it's going to ask, have you ever applied or received? Has this entity ever applied or received an EIN number? And you're going to say no, because if you say yes, you ain't getting one. Okay? Now, look. Hold on now. Hold on. Make sure you understand something. Fill the form out first so that when they're asking you the questions, the call goes a lot smoother. Literally. That's how simple it is. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you received two things here. You received an understanding of tax credits and what you need to do. Open a bank account. Need an EIN for banking purposes only. See? Do I need an EIN? Open a bank account. Needs an EIN for banking purposes only. Just that, just that simple. Created a trust. Okay, this. follow the instructions, people. They have instructions. Many of you won't read the instructions. Ah, this is the stuff that was added. Okay. And it says settler. The creator of the trust. Settler, grantor, or trustor all mean the same thing. Okay. And I do like this. I like the restricted allotments. I like the fact that Mr. Um, Divine added this to his documentation. Now, look, I'm of the mindset when we use case law, we're supporting the court's contention that their case law in court precedent is the common law for the United States. And I promise you, I can't stand that. Now, what you see is Mr. Divine, he faxed his in. Okay, he faxed it in. All right, let's get back to the, let's get back to this administrative subpoena. Ladies and gentlemen, I have charged an organization with discrimination. They've caused me a lot of problems, a lot of problems. And so what I've done is I was sitting up one day talking about, well, courts are this, courts are that. Each branch of government has its own court. Congress has its own court. When Congress sits as a full body, both houses, they're called a general court. When a Supreme Court sits, they're called the Supreme Court. When the executive branch, which is an administrative body, administrative law judges sit, they're called administrative courts. Well, in court, you have the right to subpoena witnesses, no matter if it's called an administrative hearing or not. For the people who are incarcerated, many of you are being put through their stupid system and they get to call witnesses but you do have the right to call witnesses but they restrict it ladies and gentlemen subpoena evidence they cannot deny you they deny you i won't deny it i'm just oh i'm sorry if they deny you ladies and gentlemen then that's when you hit them across the head for denial of due process because the fifth amendment to the constitution of the united states says that everyone should have the right to compulsory testimony of witnesses that includes subpoenaing documents you have that right does the judge get to determine no the judge does not get to determine whether or not the information is relevant or not you don't have to explain it to them you have to explain this is my right i'm doing an investigation and i have the right to conduct an investigation well i need you to explain no you don't need me to explain what you need to understand is this is me exercising my right I'm not asking you for permission. If I explain it to you, then you're saying I have to ask you for permission. I'm getting the information from an organization who's directly related to this matter. So if you have a problem with that, then you need to remove yourself because that means you don't know what the law is. So you need to recuse yourself because you don't have the jurisdiction to deny me the right to ask for my master file from the Social Security Administration at a Social Security Administrative hearing. Oh, oh did I? Y'all don't understand when y'all ask for a hearing with the IRS that you get to ask and request that your master file be placed on the record? You get to ask the information? Some of you are going to be stupid because that's what you do. You think you understand what's going on. You think that there is a such thing as a straw man. Man, there may be a such thing as a straw man, but this ain't got nothing to do with the straw man. It's got everything you do with the straw man, you ignorant mother. Ladies and gentlemen, just so that all of you understand, like I said, we have a lot to talk about. Congress, in 1925, introduced the United States Arbitration Act. 
Anybody, anybody not understanding what I just said? Okay, let me say it again so that you understand it. In 1925, Congress and the President changed the terms of the agreement and threw in an Arbitration Act into the contract. Oh, now, now, now you're starting to pay attention? Let, let me run it by you this way. It's called the United States Arbitration Act. There was no such thing as the United States. Hold on. This thing is the United States in government. It is called the United States of America. It's not called the United States. United States means a federal corporation. Is how it's sometimes referred to. Pay attention, people. They introduced the United States Arbitration Act. Go ahead. Take a look at the original title. It's known as the Federal Arbitration Act, but it was called the United States Arbitration Act. Yes, sir, re Bob. They introduce an arbitration clause into the agreement, and thus, the courts make fun when I say they're just like Judge Wapner. They're arbitrators. You don't believe me? Go back and take a look. I keep telling all of you, the reason why you're losing your homes, and SACOM, I'm hoping within the next couple of days to have the paperwork finished with SACOM so we can start helping you people. Mayor Legion is still chugging along. And we just brought in seven new people to help that organization to document what I'm about to say right now. Every one of you that's going into court, you're failing to bring an accounting. The law says that you have to keep an accounting. That's why you are losing. It's debt collection. Sorry. Let me do y'all a favor. Y'all don't mind? Let's go. Let's go right here. Yeah. So you have the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, and you see what I just put here? The Federal Debt Collection Procedures Act. It's under Title 28, which is the amended Judiciary Code. People, they are doing debt collections. Now, maybe you didn't understand, so let's do this. You see this says 3001? Anybody know what 3002 says? Hold on. Let's do this so you'll see. 3002, and we're going to go down to 15. 3002, and let's go down to 15. Where you at, 15? 15. United States means a federal corporation. Okay, lady, an instrumentality of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, this is under the Federal Debt Collection Procedures Act. They are doing debt collections. This whole section right here is debt collection from 3001 to 3015. This is what you're dealing with when you're in court. Proceedings before United States magistrate judges. Pay attention. I've been trying to tell people this, but nobody's been paying attention. They don't get it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's debt collection. All the cases are debt collections. See, to recover a judgment on a debt or to obtain before judgment a claim for a debt, a remedy in connection with such a claim. That's why you were all held in federal court when you were in federal court for having interfered with interstate commerce, thereby owing a debt to the United States. That's why you have to pay back your debt to society. They are handling debts. And they introduced an arbitration clause. And you just simply don't understand it because you don't get it. Amounts owing other than debts. This chapter will not apply with respects to an amount owing that is not a debt or a claim for an amount owing that is not a debt. 
That's why it's all a debt. Oh, wait. Y'all don't... Y'all needs to... Look, y'all should understand this. All right. Let's... let's we're going to go up here. Cook, cook. U. S. Constitutions. Con. S. T. I. Uh oh, get rid of that. T U T I O N. Constitution. One full amendment. We're going to go to the 14th Amendment. Now, this is Section 3. We don't want Section 3. I want Section 4. Because y'all need to see it. It was right there. There it is, right there. United States Constitution. Section 4. Okay? The validity of the public debt of the United States authorized by law, including debts incurred for payments of pensions and bounties for services and the suppression of insurrection and rebellion shall not be questioned. You don't get to question them claiming you owe a debt to the United States. Your debt to society is written in stone. It's all debt collection, people. The reason why you pay fees, pay attention. The reason why you pay fees is because they're providing a service. They're getting a bounty or a fee for the services. That's why it's always called a service fee. No matter whether it's a cell phone bill, a water bill, a light bill, a gas bill, does it matter? It's a service fee because they're providing a service and you can't question it. Ladies and gentlemen, and then they introduced an arbitration clause. How do you question a debt? It's easy. Watch this. D-E-B-T-O-R must have an An accounting. Now, what is a debtor for accounting? The type of account is a debtor, anyway, not caring about everything you need to know about creditors and debtors. Simply put, a creditor is an individual or business entity, blah, 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 blah. I just, I'm not looking for the definition of that. I am showing. Uh, let's do, give me this copy, and then we're going to go here, and we're going to put case, C-A-S-E-T-E-X-T, casetext.com. I should already be logged in. Uh-oh, I got to log in. Oh, snap. Hold on, let me, let me, give me, give me a second. Another one. Now, debtor must have an accounting. So we're going to hit enter. Ladies and gentlemen, I put y'all on pause. I want y'all to see debtor must have an accounting. And when a debtor must have an accounting, the debtor has an affirmative duty to keep accurate records and books. Okay? And must, T-E-N-D-E-R, P A Y M E N T to A V O I D avoid. Let's just put that there. Debtor must tender payment to avoid. Ladies and gentlemen, AmeriLegion is doing both. Can't tell you everything AmeriLegion is doing because we don't want nobody sitting up there stealing what they're doing. But AmeriLegion is not only following the law to avoid paying interest after tender, a debtor must keep the money ready at all times to pay the creditor if he should con conclude to receive it. Ladies and gentlemen, you must have tender. When you show up at these courts, you must prove that tender has already been made. If the judgment debtor wishes to avoid the accrual of interest on appeal, he must tender the amount of judgment or pay the amount into the court. That's why whenever you get a judgment against you, then you have to ask for a stay pending the outcome of the appeal. For accord and satisfaction to occur, the debtor must tender payment to the creditor in full satisfaction of the claim, and the creditor in turn must accept the tender. But you guys are showing up in the court, and you don't have an accounting, and you don't have the 
proof that you paid. That's what Amera Legion is putting together for people. That's what Amera Legion is doing. Everybody's been misunderstanding Amera Legion, and I don't understand why. Okay? So just understand. You must tender payment, and you must keep your own accounting. Nobody's going to tell you this because you're going to find debtor must keep and okay debtor must keep an accounting in order and i just leave the incomplete sentence what you do is you sound like an attorney for just a second okay in the ordinary course the debtor must maintain adequate records of their finances so that the court and the creditors can have a complete and accurate accounting of the debtor's financial affairs. You're going to see most of it is going to be bankruptcy court that says this. Why? Because the state court's never going to tell you that you must come in their court with an accounting. You must come in their court with adequate records and books. Now, you don't actually have to have no book. You don't have to have an accounting ledger, but it would be good if you did. Amer Legion is creating that for our clients. Say what? That's what Amer Legion is doing. That's why it was put together. Okay? And then SACOM is now going in for people with mortgages and helping them eradicate it. We're still working out some things because there is a hang-up that we have to get around, and we're working on it now. But we will get with y'all in a second about that, okay? All right. So with all being said, I don't want to go into an hour. This video just started with somebody leaving me a voicemail. She will get to listen to this before anyone else. So that she'll know what to tell her tax agent. Okay? But the rest of you will get this information and you'll understand. All right. Hey, have a good day. Got to go.